Hello everyone and welcome at the Alliance Francaise Kampala for the second round of our Akatuti program. This Akatuti program is made in collaboration with the French Embassy in Uganda, aiming to highlight every kind of artistic disciplines and give opportunities to upcoming artists. For this second round, we are very delighted to host as a cultural director Beverly Nambozo and Sengi Onva with a show around the story, My Story. I want to make a big thanks to Total Energy Uganda for supporting us, and now it's time for the show. What is your story? Each one of us carries a story. Some of us bear the burden of carrying an untold story. A month ago, Alliance Francaise de Kampala approached the Badishai Niwe Poetry Foundation asking if we could collaborate in an arts performance. And I was honored to invite artists of various disciplines across Uganda, such magnificent talent. Together with the French Embassy, we have been blessed to be performing almost to perfection with purpose, sharing our stories through various arts. And today, we have the second Akatuti. I'm Beverly Nambozen Zengyumba, director of the Bagishai Niwe Poetry Foundation and an artist myself. As you watch us perform, think about your story. What's your story? I never see you. I 
actually today I decided to come and surprise all these people. Oh, you know, I love to play the piano. I can and see. I've, yeah, I've been playing piano all my life. You've been playing piano all my life? Let's say from four years old. Four years old. old. Four years old, I started to play this instrument. But you know, along the way in my life, I somehow abandoned it. Mm -hmm. And then I focused on more things that would fulfill me. Mm -hmm. Of course, I went to school, I graduated, mm -hmm. I started up a jewelry business. Where you I used to make, yes, I used to make necklaces out of beads. With your hands? With my own hands. Ah. Then I went and studied another course of landscape design. What is that? Okay, landscape design in simple languages. Compound designing. Growing oh. plants and flowers in your home. Yes, I then started a furniture business, which I still do today. Why? Furniture. Furniture. From four years old, you were doing this, one. Right? Yes. Then again, you went to school. You started jewelry. Then you ran the step design. Then furniture. Yes. And, and you're still doing furniture. And I'm still doing furniture today. But I was still feeling so empty. Yeah, then I remembered that, you know what? Let me resume playing this instrument. Mm -hmm. This is my first love. Uh, I saw you yeah. when you were playing. There's a way you get lost in me. Yes. It's like this, this instrument is speaking right to your soul. Yes. I saw, my name is Zoe the Storyteller. I'm Louise. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. In fact, let me play you another one. Please do. I enjoy listening. Please do. Maybe you've heard this one before. Maybe. So 
songs of victory for our healing.
food that was you too. So, do you like it? I love it. Thank you. But you seem to be new to this market. I've always been sitting here. Is this the first time you're seeing me? I think I never pay attention. Well, I often sit here watching the goings on in the yeah. market. You know, markets are the best way of knowing oh, what happens in the world. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to socialize with people, knowing how they think and what affects them in their lives. So I often sit here just first time and draw about what I see, wow. what I reflect on. Oh, my name is Zoe, the storyteller. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Zoe. Yes, I'm a storyteller. Oh, really? Yes. yes. Okay. I was telling Louise about the power in storytelling, how rich and diverse it is, and it is what changes society. Mm -hmm. And storytelling is found in everything. Yeah. This is what True. you do here. Yeah, this is what I do, of course, on top of other things. Mm. Tell me more uh, about yourself. Tell me more how you started this. How? Well, my interest in drawing stretches from way back mm -hmm. in childhood. Oh. Um, but home was my first place of appreciating or starting considering drawing oh. as a medium of communication, oh. Oh. of critique. You know how our traditional settings can be, how our parents can be taught? Yes, I know. That was my mother, oh. uh, Elizabeth. Rest in peace. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my mother was such a tough lady. Mm -hmm. And like for many of children growing up in such settings, you always find ways of navigating or going about hey. that toughness of parents. Hey, hey. So I found out with time that my mother had a weakness with um, humor. Uh -huh. So what I would do, when she did something I didn't particularly like or I wanted to get to her about something, hey. I would simply draw something and put it somewhere where I knew she would see it yeah. and then let her sit back and watch her helplessly <laughs> trying to control her laughter yeah. and then she could laugh. I can imagine. Uh, but as she laughs, she wants to still pretend yeah, that yeah, she's that she tough. So when you laugh along, she turns to you and says, <laughs> I love the country. Yeah, but somehow like that, I got to learn that it disarmed her, that mm, the humor mm. disarmed her. So I took that humor to other spaces, I took it to school because I knew uh, mostly it was about dealing with power. Those yes, who are yes, more yes. powerful, just like uh, with parents, it's mm. basically about power, parents and children. So I took it to school where I could not speak to teachers about certain <laughs> things, I would just draw um, a cartoon on the, on the notes board or pin yeah. it somewhere. Um, so over time, realizing that it really worked, mm. I took it to other spaces, critiquing society, religion, politics. You remind me about someone. Who is that? I've seen cartoons on Facebook. Facebook? Facebook. And, and what name? So, sa, sa, what, what did you say your name was? Spire. Spire! Okay, it so is you. you've seen my cartoons on I've Facebook. I've seen your cartoons on Facebook. Wow, on I follow cartoons. you. Yes. Wow, that's and last time you invited uh, one interview on TV. Mm -hmm. I saw. You watched? I watched everything. <laughs> so you were a lecturer? Yeah, I was a lecturer of philosophy. Hey. Yeah, something that is a bit different. And people sometimes ask, but a lecturer of philosophy, what mm -hmm. are you doing with cartoons? Yeah, it's my academic training, it's basically philosophy. But as I said earlier, cartoons are basically a means of communication. Mm. It's a way, a form of expression. Wow. So even as a philosopher, I still use my cartoons to communicate. Mm. In teaching, actually, if you came to my class, you would find a board full of cartoons wow. on the not on the wow. blackboard or whiteboard, and that's what draws students' attention. Even one who has been dozing, the moment they see you starting to draw, <laughs> yeah, they, they wake up. up. Wow. Yeah, so it's basically they're the same thing, knowledge and, is just and, the same thing. You have written books? Yeah, a couple of them. Yes, yes. Have you read any? There's this Same. book called Karan Quarantine. Oh, Quarantine. Yeah, yes. that's just a brief story about my quarantine experience. Wow. Yeah, the latest is uh, what I saw when I died. Have you seen that one? Not yet, but. How do we get these books? 
You can find them in many of the bookshops around Book Point, Aristoc, wow. and Makerere University book um, publishers. Well, yeah, they are available. Well, and this is, I can understand this a little bit. What are you seeing here? This is that monster that is killing us, Corona. <laughs> that <laughs> one. Exactly. Yes, and, and this, this looks like an injection. And an injection? Yes. What exactly? And the Corona oh. is trying to run. That could be vaccination. That could be vaccination. Are you vaccinated? Ah, don't talk about vaccination. You have not had stories about vaccination. It's stories. Eh, they said at home they vaccinate you, then they put a coin, you become magnetic, you become then, you, then you, you die. Ah. Oh, I'm vaccinated. That's why you see that I have metal stuff all over my body. Those I've attracted as I came here. <laughs> I don't see any metals on me. Yeah, that's what you're saying. It's, it's what happens when people are vaccinated. So it is not as deadly as people say. You might need to consider it more seriously. Go behind those stories. You might find something important. Okay. I have been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. You have also been vaccinated? I have been vaccinated. No, but that, that, that is Wolokoso. That is Wolokoso. Okay, here. Get to... something. Magle oh, I have a knife here. Try, try, try and try. see if it is going to stick on you. Try him, try him. Where, where? Where? Mm -hmm. You see? I think I Go get vaccinated because it is the safe way to live right now. It is a trend. Ah, your brother has said, My name is Zoe, the storyteller. Very nice. Have some cake, Zoe. I've been hearing you guys. I have seen the cartoons. I follow you on social media. I am on Facebook oh, and I've already seen you. I follow you. You do? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Test. Uh, this is a chocolate fudge. Mm. You know her? Yeah, I know what her. Is so She's been to this market. I'm also not seeing her. Yes, I've not been here before. My name is Asha Batenga. Asha Batenga? The yes. one who makes cakes. Asha the Batenga. Ay, 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 ay. I know you. I know you, Asha. I know you. I How heard about you. you. I follow you on Facebook. I'm also on Facebook. Asha, that is good. Asha, I've been telling my friends here about the power of storytelling. Today I want to hear your story. How did you begin doing making these sweet, delicious cakes? Hmm? My story is long. We can sit here the whole day, the whole night listening to my story. Do you have time? Please, I have time. Tell me more about you. Hmm? Okay. Let me tell you about my baking. I did not, I did not study this. No? So before I begin the story about cake leaf, Asha the Batenga. Let me first tell you where it all started from. In high school, when I left high school at the, at the age of 18 years, senior six, you know that time, vacation period? Yeah? Mm. Yes. I started my work there. I started working when I was 18. So I did different jobs. I did uh, cosmetics. I did hair. I did shoes. I did all these things, but failed. Uh, later in life, I, I went into construction. Construction? Construction. I was selling bricks, oh. stones, uh, culverts, yeah. those things you see on the road. Yeah? Yes. I did all that. To the builders. To the builders. Mm. When I went to Makere University, you know Makere University? Yeah. Who doesn't know Makere? Some people don't know. So when I went to Makere University, I did information technology. You know information technology? Uh, what is the information technology is anything to do with computer, the software, the hardware, those things. Even internet. Internet, everything. All, all that is information technology. Oh. So I said information technology. I got some jobs, failed. When I was in construction, business was good. You know how business is in Kampala? Mm. It starts off very well. Then after skew, it goes down. So construction went down. That was 2013. It was a dark year for me. 2014, I went down. I was depressed. Uh, I wasn't fine. I was so stressed. I was at home the whole year 2014. I didn't do anything with my life. I was there feeling sorry for myself, crying, cursing, since I had started working very early. Mm -hmm. So that is when the vision of baking Mm -hmm. Kenny, mm -hmm. 2015, it's like a veil was lifted off my eyes. 
I went into baking. Yes. But I couldn't go study baking. First of all, I didn't have money mm. to, to go study another course. Mm. And because I'm already disappointed in the information technology. Yes. I decided to go to the university. We all know YouTube. YouTube, the internet. Internet. I got my internet. I went on YouTube and I started searching about baking. How to bake a cake. So we, let me tell you a secret. Mm -hmm. The first cake I baked, mm. I spat it out. It Why? was that bad. Because oh. I never baked all my life. So I started baking and I didn't like what I was baking. I started adjusting, adjusting ingredients, doing a lot of research, different blogs. I was on different blogs. I went to Facebook, everywhere, searching for the recipes. So as you eat that chocolate fudge and mm. you love it, mm. eat, eat cake, I love just it. eat cake. I love it. As you love it, mm. the first ones that came out, you never have loved them. But I insisted and I baked and baked. Mm. Now, cake was born in 2015. I started doing cakes. I, I taught myself how to design cakes. I made sure that people love what they were eating. So in this journey of baking, the reason why I'm actually here because I need to inspire people, different people. How do I inspire people? I have different things. Uh, first of all, on Facebook, I created a platform that brings together all different bakers in the country. Where is that? I also want to find you. It's called Cake Shop Uganda. It's on Facebook. It is a baking community for suppliers and people who love cake. So, so a cake learn, lover. Of course, I would learn. I would learn. Yes, from Cake Shop. Inside a festival, it is called the Kampala Cake Fair. Have you heard of it? E that thing that happens at the, the museum. That the one museum. where you go eat cake and until it's you broke. Yes, I know that one. Now that was my event. I say that event and everyone comes in December, every end of it just to enjoy I'm always there. cake, yes. ice cream, any pastry you mm. are there. Mm. After that, we went to the magazine. So we have a magazine. It has recipes. It's what I'm seeing there. I can give you a copy. Ah, thank you, I'll carry along. I can give you a copy. That magazine has also changed life. Wow. People get recipes here, and I can give you a second edition. That is just the first edition. Let me get you something else. Eh? This is good. I'll also learn and make baked cakes. This one is the second edition. So we have two editions. We have first and second. So if you want to bake anything, this is it. You will learn recipes. Thank you. So Thank through you. this kind of thing, so we, we have touched lives. Lives have changed. So if you ask me my baking story, it is all because I failed. So out of failure, it has been success. What an inspirational story. Yeah. So you can eat more cake. Cake? How much is cake? Uh, what are you barefoot? Hey. <laughs> ah, I didn't even notice that I'm barefooted. Let me tell you. You know, the theatres are closed. Huh? So I went for rehearsals at my friend's place. As soon as I moved my shoes, starting to rehearse, he got an emergency. He said, Rashid, hurry, hurry, hurry. I need to lock the house, hurry! I need to lock the house. So that's why I end up here barefooted. You are going to you do theatre? Yes, I do theatre. Please rehearse from here. There's enough space. I can rehearse from here. Rehearse from here. You are okay, I can rehearse from here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In my language, they're so synthesized for me. So you people, I am here developing a play. So I'm going to try to rehearse for you. And you can give me feedback. Yeah? Okay. So this play, is about a very important day, the day of tribulation of great achievement, when I was invited to the European Commission to share about my work in the community, working with young girls. Instead, it's a day I got lost at Brussels International Airport. Why did hey, I got lost? Me, let me share with you. You guys, Rashida has updated her Facebook page. Oh look, she's just arrived at Brussels Airport. Oh, have you seen her photo? She's arrived into greatness. Oh, she says, second update, her battery is low, but she's so excited to be in Europe for the first time. Great job, Rashida. Welcome to 
Brussels International Airport. <laughs> professor? Professor? Oh, no, I'm not professor. Who's supposed to pick me up? Yeah. Let me make a phone call. Ah, my back is low. Taxi, there is no way. 
take level four, take level five, take level X, and no one speaks English. It is different from our own bus park here. Bus park? Oh, no. <laughs> that place is massive. Lifts up, down, and no one speaks English. Ah. You people, I cried. I even called for my mother who has been dead for <laughs> seven years. For some reason, I thought she'd come and show me the exit. That mothers know everything. But I tell you, you people, that guy learned an important lesson. You ask me what lesson I learned. What did you learn? <laughs> Don't laugh. I learned to read my emails. You can't imagine. It was written in my email when I fully charged my phone and finally read the emails properly. It was written that I was expected to take the taxi at the hotel. No one was supposed to pick me up. It was written. <laughs> Put yourself in my shoes. I. I not know that I had been invited to speak at the European Commission. Mm. I expected VIP treatment, you know, convoy like our ministers. Yeah? I need to be stranded at the airport. I was embarrassed. Ah. Sheila, you embarrassed us. <laughs> <laughs> I, <saw. laughs> I take that one, I embarrassed the whole Uganda. But it's okay, it's okay to get lost. I was embarrassed. Now you read your email? These days I read my emails. Let me tell you, I even print hard copies. Let me let them when I'm troubled. Just for double checking, I laminate. Ha, I double check when I'm troubled. When was the last time I read my own emails? Then you start reading your emails. I tell you, you don't want to be lost like me. Ah, ah, ah. They can't really follow that language, but it sounds deep and sad. What is it about? It is deep. Very deep. It's about my life growing up without a mother's love. You know, 
growing up without parents, most especially mother. The same mother is your first teacher in life. She teaches you the basics of life, how to survive. She teaches you what the life is all about. But I didn't get that. I didn't get that growing up. It's a void that has always been on my heart, a void that has been so big. A void I felt probably no one would ever be able to fill. It's a void that I felt was so heavy. It's a void I've always carried on in my life, you know, night and day. The days I saw, the days I cried, the days I longed for a mother's love, the days I longed for someone to just have me. They told me everything would be okay. You know, the days I thought, maybe my mom would be there and I can talk to her. But I didn't think that. The boy they thought would never be filled. But, but, let me tell you a story. Along the way, I met this girl. Uh, on a calm day, a light took hold of my hand. A spell bound by rather settled like a sea. Her name was Aeno. In her, I saw millions of a lady. The definition of Aeno. And again, me. In me, love she tamed. In me, I sought her. Peace, the definition I saw through her. You know? Again, you made me believe. Again, you have to be believe. Again, you know more, though. It's even more horror. Again, you. Again, you look through my void. She unlocked a room I had for long closed. She picked up pieces of me I had thrown up into the recycle bin. Again, you made me excavate myself. One by one, I became whole. In her, I found love. And not just love but a mother's love. In Ageno, I found something I had for long, long for. Ageno, and Amari. Ageno deserves a piece of cake. Please eat some cake. Ageno. Uh, how do they call cake in your language? Ugari. Ugari? Ugari. But that sounds like Ugari, like the Swahili word in Posho. I think because well, we don't have uh, the name cake in our local language. It's, really? It's Ugari. Even in Uganda, in, in, in Buganda here, in the central, when you say cake, we call it Mugati. Oh, that's Meaning that's bread. That's interesting. No, no, no. Cake for Ketch. Ketch? No! Ketch, yes. that is English. That is English. Mugati. It is Mugati. Ugari in language. Actually, Ugari. in Uganda, I don't think we have any tribe that calls it by the native language. Right. So, Ugari, Ugati, Ketch. That is English. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. For enjoy cake. Sound has brought me here to get some inspiration. Haikuist. Yes, a haikuist. I'm a kind of poet that tries to write things that are, I could say, brief, but talk about our lives. So as I was passing by, I heard that song. Then I thought to myself, why shouldn't I just sit here and think of something? So as I was sitting, some ideas came to pass, and I thought to myself, why not write some inspiration down? So in my high post, I looked at what was around, and tried to make something brief and say, I looked to my right, and said, cakes, on this special day, what a momentous view. 
I hope your test is great. Wow. <laughs> I can see what we get. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm not here for the free cake. As I had said, I was inspired. So I looked to my left and thought again. If I had some art, like Spire the cartoonist, I'd write my history. That is strong. <laughs> That's a strong one. So, it's good you have asked. So I'll not try to become academic here. But I'd like to give you my journey through these haikus. I started way, way long ago and didn't know what I wanted to become in future. I was born probably good at a, good, a number of things. I had some art in me. I had some athletics in me. I loved literature. I also loved films. But as life grew, I realized some things are quite impossible. So, my dear cartoonist, I hope this won't break your heart. But the first thing I retired from was art. Of all things. Of all things, it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. Then life went on. At around secondary school, as an athlete, I had someone I would look to. And I think this was a footballer called Wayne Rooney. At 17, he was making money. At around the same age, I was seated in class writing. And I realized there was no way I was going to make this money. So I also retired from athletics and remained with literature and film. So I get to university and have to decide, is it literature or is it film? But in there, I decided to go for literature and help myself become competitive. So I looked out for competitions and around 2015, there was a Babishai competition. That was the first year males were allowed to compete. So I put something in there. Unfortunately, it wasn't good news. So I came back in 2020, this time as an accomplished poet. I tried something new, something called a haiku. These are just three lined kind of poems. So I put something in there. I won't forget that night. Mm -hmm. As people were busy celebrating the new year, I was at work, just looking at the internet, searching for competitions. And the haiku, for the Babishai 2020 haiku, hours, for competition is what I went to. And people around here, this time it was good news. Mm -hmm. I came out as the eventual winner. Oh, oh. But before you think about that, I'd like to give you a test of what made me the eventual winner. Mm -hmm. So I gave something about my life. In it, I say, Thorns and roses proud, bringing forth poetic life, color like ashes fade. Oh. And the one that gave me the eventual victory. I thought of this. The morning rains fall, endlessly hugging thy sleep. Frozen ideas die. And that, I think, has made me become the high uh, ambassador in Uganda today. <laughs>
yet. I'm also a poet. Spoken word, but in English. It was almost by accident that I got here. What is your story? When my my story is quite a long one, but let me make it brief. When the rest of the world was falling in love, I covered up like a nun. I loved church and I read books. Boys were just another example of living things. My life was calm, my heart a sea of moon. And then he came. No, he was here, but he arrived. He was all cute looking nerdy behind those specs, a smile that redefined dawns, and those eyes spears through my heart. He was calm and collected, soft spoken and harmless, but he was armed with a voice, a voice that started walls in my belly. Don't tell me about butterflies. Oh, no. The lad steered storms with every glance he shot my way. Oh. I was in love, I or just a crush, with a beast of a man. He wore wise words on his lips like lip gloss. I don't know about the roller coaster, but was one ride a smooth sail through the tide. Manage this son of an African. He only knew as much as I did that I was floating. Because oh, wow. I sinned with that descendant of Adam. Hey, hey. In thought, of course, my mouth as my body shut and pure. I returned to the convent as pure as I left, mm -hmm. hoping to fall in love again. But I was never telling him a thing. Oh. 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 This story seems very interesting. It seems like a love at first sight you know, sort of story. Tell us more. Um, it is indeed a love at first sight story. You see, throughout my life, through childhood and school, high school, everything, everyone thought that I could make a good now. And my family, friends, all nurtured me throughout that direction. Until, of course, university, when I met this gentleman that turned my life around and made me, made me rethink what I wanted to do with my life. And it is because of that that I am here and perhaps known at the point. Oh! So when you met him, should I say love? Did he become a nun because of love? Well, I could say love changed me, love inspired me. And love made me think of other things to do with my life other than just taking, you know, a religious direction. That is why I do not have a white bear right now. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a cake oh, for that. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you for cake. How many times have you been in love? Twice. Twice. A second cake for that. <laughs> 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 Are you good? The love story has given me some inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a haiku for that. Oh, okay. This could go out to your this good man. Sorry, sir. I was so in love. Oh, was it just a crush? With a beast of a man. Yes, it's your place. Yes, it's your place. I have to go. It's great. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it.